Hi, in this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to implement a simple drag and drop action in a Flash movie. So to begin with, I have a starter file and I have the link for this posted in the description of this tutorial. And this is to demonstrate what it's going to do when we're finished so that you can see how we're going to get there. So let me run this. Okay, and so what's going to happen is you'll be able to click and drag things over and be able to put together our little snowman. And then when we're finished, right after we've put all the pieces in there and you want to start again, we'll be able to hit the clear button and it will put everything back to where it started from. So I'm going to open up the starter file that I have posted and show you how it's set up already. So to begin with, uh, in the library, right, I have different movie clips, right, I imported in some graphics to use and then converted them into movie clips. So each of these items on the stage has been set up as a movie clip. And then I have a separate button here that I created so that we can reset it back to the beginning. So on the stage, I have my snowman layer, and then I have a separate layer for actions. Now the actions already has a little bit of code in there to start out with, which uh, I'll show you just has some comments in there because uh, part of what we're going to be doing later to reset everything is to put things back into their X and Y coordinates placed on stage. So to reduce the amount of typing they have to do later, I just put, in, put that information in already and commented it out. So right now, if I run this and try to move anything, it doesn't work, right? So these are all just static and then the button doesn't do anything because they're all in the same position anyway. So these are all set up as movie clips. So if I open up the properties panel, we can see that these are instances, like this is the instance of the hat and this is the instance of the eyes and so forth. So in order to be able to add action script to any of these elements, we have to give them instance names. So I'm going to click on each one of these and give it a unique instance name for what it is. So I'm just going to call this one hat, and then this will be eyes, and then mouth, and so forth. So I'm going to continue coming in here and setting these up so that they have unique instance names, including the button. Okay, so now just to show you, I've set up each of these with a unique instance name, so right arm, scarf, left arm, this is clear button, nose, mouth, eyes, and hat. So now to add a drag and drop action to these, I'll start with the hat. So I'm just going to click on it to select it. And then in the panel over here to the side, we have code snippets. So I'm going to select code snippets and in the actions folder, right, you can see that there's a drag and drop. So if we click on this once just to select it, we get a couple of little buttons here that'll give us more details about this action. So the little eye gives us information. And if you click on the parentheses, it will let us see sample code. So since I had the hat instance selected, it even shows what it's going to look like for that particular instance. All right, so I can insert it from here. I could also come back here and just double click on drag and drop. So here I'm just going to click insert. And you can see that it added it to the actions for the frame. And I'm going to come back up and go to window and actions to open up my actions panel. And you can see that this is the code that the code snippet has added. So just to test this out, to see if the hat works, I'm going to go to test movie. And you can see that I can drag the hat and then drop it anywhere else on stage. And the clear button doesn't work yet, but we'll come back to that. So 
So let's just take a closer look at the code that was added, right? We have our comment here that tells you a little bit of detail about what's coming on here. We can see that hat is the instance name of what I call that. And it's going to add event listener. In other words, it's going to be waiting for an event to occur. And what is that event? It's a mouse event and it's a mouse down. And what should it do when this occurs? We want it to do click and drag. And this is the name of the function that was automatically generated by Flash. Now yours might say underscore or no underscore, uh, might say underscore one or underscore two. This tag changes depending on how many times you have clicked and used this particular method during that editing session. So this is the function. In other words, this is what it should do when the mouse is clicked down. So this is the same function, click to drag underscore three, and it says hat dot start drag, open close parentheses, semicolon. So it's going to let the hat start to drag. Then we have another event listener. This is the stage. The stage is going to be waiting for the event to be a mouse up. And when it's mouse up, then it's going to do this function, which is to release to drop. And the release to drop event is, as you can see, hat stop drag. So now, if you wanted to come in here, we can do the same thing with each of these other movie clips. We could come in here and drag and drop, and I can just double click on it, and we'll see that it's going to add the code for the eyes. And it will also, let me switch back here and we'll add the nose. All right, so it's repeating this code over and over again for each movie clip that I have selected. So now if I test this out, so now when I test, so we could go in and add the rest of these, but for time purposes, I'm not going to do them. All right, so I'm going to close this. Okay, so as I said, we could come in here and add these in the same way that we did the hat and the eyes and the mouth. We have a lot of code and one of the things in working with the code snippets panel is it doesn't really combine things together well. Um, so you see that this all worked fine, but I just want to show you another alternative. So if we come in here to actions, this is kind of repetitive in here. It's waiting, the stage is waiting for an event listener for the mouse up. And the only difference between this mouse up event and the one for the nose mouse up event is which thing we want to stop dragging. And then the same thing for what we want to start dragging. They're all the same except for the movie clip instance that we want to start dragging. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all of these except the first one. So I'm just going to come up here and remove those. And to help us make this a little more sensible, right, something that has more meaning, why don't we say uh, the name of this event would be to start drag. And then I'll rename the function here to match with start drag. And then the event that we want to happen when the mouse is released is we'll do stop drag and stop drag. Now, instead of being specific about hat, I'm just going to comment these two lines out. And let's look at some, a way of saying something more generic. And a way of doing that, of referring to that, is we can say event.target. So the item that started this whole thing, we can be generic about saying what was clicked, and that was the event target. So if we chose the hat, then event.target is the hat. And let's say event.target stop drag. So now we have the hat event that's being listened for, but I deleted the other ones. 
So I'm going to say eyes, mouth, nose, and we have right arm, left arm, and scarf. And we want all of those to listen for this event. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it in. Okay, so now I'm going to save it and I'm going to try to run it and see what happens. So not able to drag here. So let's see what's going on. Okay, my error messages are displaying down here on the Compile Errors tab. And it says overriding a function that is not not marked for override. In other words, I ended up using start drag, which also happens to be the name of the function here. So I'm really kind of reusing the same function name. So I'm not allowed to do that. So let's change this to begin. So wherever I see start drag, I'm going to put in begin drag. And I'm also going to need to change the stop drag because that is the same thing. So we'll do end drag. So I'm going to go in and rename these and we'll come back. Okay, so I went in and I renamed these from start drag to begin drag and I renamed the function to begin drag. So now each of these movie clips are listening for this event for a mouse down and when that occurs it's going to do the begin drag function. So this is the begin drag function. Let me separate that down a little. And what is it going to do? It's going to take whatever is being clicked that's beginning this event and it's going to let it start to drag. Now the stage is listening for an event of mouse up and what it will do when that occurs is it's going to do the end drag function. So I renamed this to end drag and it's going to stop dragging whatever started that event. So now let me try running this and we'll see, yep, all of these things. Now we can even do these. We didn't add them in by using the code snippets. Right? So all of our items are now clickable and movable. And again, this shortened up rather than adding a separate function for every single one of them, but either one would work to give us the same result. So now the next thing we want to do is to set up the clear button so that if they wanted to start all over again, they could click it and it'll put everything back into their original positions. So now one th the first thing in order to do that is you need to get the positions for each of the items. So we need the X and Y coordinates. So if I click on the hat, right, you can see over here in the properties panel, this is the X position and the Y position. And then the left arm, we can see X and Y coordinates. So in the sample file, if you started out with this, I already have the X and Y coordinates mapped out for you in the action script. So if I go back into the actions panel, right, and at the top I have the hat X and hat Y coordinates, eyes X, eyes Y coordinates. So each of the items in there for our movie clips have their coordinates. So what we'll do is we'll come back to this in a second. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the clear button and it's got the instance name clear BTM and I'm going to add a code snippet to it and I'm going to use the click to position an object. So I'm going to double click on this to add the code right into my action script. And you can see here's our comment, replace the value 200 with the X coordinate and this with the Y coordinate. But you can see that this is being applied to the clear button. So in other words, it's going to move this button to another position. So let me, let me just try running it and we can see what happens when we click the clear button. Right, so when I click this, it moves it up into this position. That's not what we want to have happen. We want all of these other things to end up back in their original positions. So instead of clear button X and clear button Y, 
there's a lot of things that we want it to do here. We want it to move each of these movie clips. I'm just going to copy this since I've already gotten the coordinates out here and paste them in here. So when we click the button, it's going to do all of these things. It's going to change the hat back to its X and Y coordinates, the eyes back to its X and Y, and so forth. So now let me try running that. Right, I'm just going to move these around and place them in different places so that we can see if everything is going to work. And I tap clear and everything goes back to their original positions. So that's an example of using code snippets in order to add drag and drop and then also a little bit more of streamlining some of the code and how to reset our items back to their original positions.